Okay, so um, for my FedEx project, I ended up reading a book called The Confidence Code, and it basically deals with the confidence gap between men and women. Um, and so before I start, um, this was like the basic gener um, definition that the book found, like applied to sort of what they were referring to when they meant confidence. So confidence is the stuff that turns thoughts into actions, and um, that just resonated with me, and I think it, like, reson it can resonate with all of us, so I hope that sort of that helps explain why this is relevant to you guys um, as well. And so um, the workplace is one of the most obvious places I found, um, like the book presented, where women lack confidence, and I found that the confidence gap between men, men and women was most obvious here. So um, just to share with you some of the evidence that personally struck me, um, in a study by the Institute of Leadership and Management in the UK, they found that half of women reported feelings of self-doubt about their performance, while less than a third of men um, reported self-doubt about their performance. And then second, um, men initiate salary negotiations, um, like coming out of college and in, into like sort of like one of their first jobs. They initiate salary negotiations four times as often as women do. And when women do negotiate, they ask for 30% less than men. And so um, and what they basically ended up finding is that women effectively believe they're 20% less valuable than men do, in the, than men believe they are in the workforce. And one of the quotes that um, struck me from the book was, um, someone said, when a man w walks into a room, they're assumed to be competent until they prove otherwise, but for women, it's the other way around. And... Um, as much as I hate to admit it, I feel like there definitely is some truth behind that statement, and hearing something like that sort of makes um, makes me wonder, like, how women are supposed to sort of gain confidence when it feels like there's a lot to overcome. And so some of the statistics I just shared with you demonstrate the, the confidence gap, but I think there's also, there's also clearly a success gap, and these are sort of some of the facts we hear more often, but they still, they still manage to strike me. And that, for example, um, is women on average earn, like, still today, 77 cents for every dollar that men do. And the fact that only 20 out of the 100 um, U.S. senators are women and less than 4% of CEOs in Fortune 500 are women. So there are definitely issues and there's definitely inequality. And one of the questions the book talked about was, um, when does this begin? And why does an education seem to translate into jobs for women? And it turns out that the academic classroom where girls are praised for like raising their hand and following the rules doesn't exactly teach us how to succeed in an assertive and competitive real world. Whereas like sometimes the, um, the roughhousing and teasing that's, much, that's more common for boys can toughen them up and lead to resilience. Um, and so one of the things that the book showed me was that um, moving into the workplace, which like is something that's going to be important to us soon in the future. Um, the workplace is sort of um, an area that d demands a certain amount of like a, an ability to scheme, an ability to promote yourself, and um, not letting a no stop you. And in the real world where life isn't always fair, it's not really surprising that confidence um, often wins over confidence. Um, so after sort of hearing all that and looking at all that, um, the book ended with a positive message, and that's there are takeaways that I think apply to everyone, regardless of gender. Um, so I think like those the same statistics statistics that seem sort of depressing can actually become motivation, and we can see the obstacles as opportunities. Um, and so, the book basically what I took away as the main confidence barriers were overthinking, um, fear of failure, sh striving for perfect for perfection, and personalizing criticism. And so what we can um, take away, the lessons that I took away for like all of us, I think in general, um, to best move forward and to build your confidence um, were these five things. So one, try not to ruminate on the past and mistakes and negative events. And especially when you re receive criticism, don't personalize it. They're, it's directed at your skills and not your personal values. And second, um, it's important to take risks and leave your comfort zone because co building confidence comes with um, with facing ups and downs. Um, three, allow yourself to be imperfect. Striving for perfection ends up being basically a waste of time, most of it, um, and it slows down confidence. And then fourth, um, fail fast. And this was something that um, surprised me, but that I found really interesting, was they basically said that it's smarter to throw together like a bunch of prototypes and go through them quickly to see which ones work 
and then get rid of the rest. And this allows for adjustment constantly, and um, it speeds up success, which also, and it also provides, you sort of have left less to use if you um, take this path. And then we also need to remember that failing doesn't make us failures. And then lastly, when in doubt, act. At, um, the biggest takeaway message from this book for me was action builds confidence. It involves risk and failure. And um, small t doing, doing this, like making a decision instead of hesitating, just even in small steps, will lead to the bigger ones. Um, and I sort of realized that, like, in the real world, like, where it's competitive and there's, like, a lot of different factors, um, sort of, or obstacles to your success, good good things come to those who wait isn't necessarily, like, the best expression to follow. So, um, I just think, so, when in doubt, act was probably one of the most important things that I learned. And I hope that this, you guys found this relevant. Thank you.